Welcome to the inaugural installment of Lime Men Are People 2. Martin O'Donnell here with Nick Allegretti. Nick, good to see you, man. And we're here to talk about some coins. Tell, yeah. tell, me, tell me, big picture, how did you get into coin collecting? When? All right, so I brought the, so I brought the little guy. Um, so this is just a basic. It's a 1948 wheat penny. Uh, not worth a lot, but collected these my whole childhood. Um, you, find, you can actually find these in circulation, so if you get pennies back, occasionally you'll find one. They just got two little wheat stalks on the back. They look a little different. Thought they were cool, so I kind of started collecting them. And then I went to a coin store probably, I think, 10 years ago. Didn't know there were coins, once coin stores. I went to one. Uh, we sold one of my friend's grandfather's collections, and we were probably there for about two hours going through it, uh, what, what each coin was, how much they were worth, uh, and I couldn't leave. I got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I would, but I, I got hooked, so... Wheat pennies what got it started, and this actually, this wheat penny is one my brother gives me. He gives me for every home game. He gives me two Tootsie Pops and a couple of wheat pennies for every game, so I brought one of those. Nice. So, yeah, that's how I started in it. been collecting for about 10 years now. Okay, so when, two questions to follow up on that. One, how often do you just go shopping, right? And then two, what are you looking for when you decide, all right, I'm, I'm ready for another coin? Uh, so I never, like... Because it's, you never really know what you're going to find when you go to a store um, or a shop, whatever you're going to. I went yesterday, the, uh, we had the Champagne Coin Show, pretty big stuff. So I went over there for a couple hours. Um, but yeah, when you go in, you, I usually just go in just to learn. Uh, so I go over to Specialty Stamp of Coin down in downtown Champaign. Uh, and I just go in and I'll sit there. If I have a couple hours, I'll sit there for a couple hours. And if there's something to buy uh, that goes with my collection, I'll buy it. Um, if not... I just sit there and I listen to stories from collectors who've been collecting for 50, 60 years and try to learn as much as I can. So are you primarily going into a bricks and mortar store when you do go look? Are you doing some of it online? I mean, what's kind of the uh, ratio? Yeah, a little, bit, a little bit online, but usually the premiums online are just too much. Uh, cause, because collecting, it, it's, it's, my, it's a collection as well, but it's also an investment. So I want to cut the, cut the cost as low as I can. So. The more frequently you go to a shop, the lower the prices are going to be. You build a better relationship. Uh, so I've got a couple of shops in like my mainstays that I go to. Um, but yeah, usually I'm going to either coin shows, which are all over Illinois, mm -hmm. um, or coin stores. Well, now you said you know you're looking for things sometimes that go with your collection. So let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about a couple of these items that you brought here today to show. Talk a little bit about you know how do you define your collection? I mean, are yeah. you are you, are you certain? eras or your certain mm -hmm. years or your certain types of coins yeah. and then let's let's dive into this all right so yeah i'll start with my first the first coin i brought yeah i'm my collection is mainly u.s i collect u.s currency for the most part a little bit of foreign uh if we get into gold and silver mostly uh u.s so the first coin i brought uh it's a morgan silver dollar the morgans are from 1878 to 1904 and then again in 1921 um that's my biggest collection i'm trying sure. to get every year uh, and every mint mark. We've minted in Carson City, New Orleans, uh, Philadelphia, uh, I want to San Francisco, uh, and one more. So this one right here is Carson City. Uh, only minted there, I think, half of the years. Sorry, I'm sprinting. Minted uh, half of the years that we minted coins. Uh, so I'll pull this out. This one's a little bit special. It's called a GSA. You can see it's in this holder. Um, I think it was back uh, in the 70s or the 80s, we basically put all these coins into these holders. Hmm. You could send in 15 bucks for which one this one was, and they would send you a coin. You didn't get to pick the date, you didn't get to pick the mint mark, they just sent it out, uh, and those have since become more collectible as Morgans as well. Uh, so this is one of the only GSAs I have. Uh, probably one of my favorites, an 18, 1885 CC. You probably can't see the CC, but there's a little mint mark right on the bottom in the back. Morgans are my biggest collection. Um, probably my favorite coin, which I didn't bring, because Usually don't take it out the safe. Well, no, uh, you, you wouldn't, right? No, it's, uh, it's an 1893S. Uh, it's the le lowest mintage of all the Morgans. So. so what's a Morgan? So, yeah, the Morgan, he's the guy that developed the coin. He, gotcha. He designed the coin, gotcha. so you named the coin after him. Uh, but, yeah, that's the 78 to 1904. Very cool. So definitely the favorite part of my collection. Okay. Um, yeah, love Morgans. Definitely the largest part of my collection. All right, what else? Okay, so I see you got a little bit of gold here. I do have a little bit of gold. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, this is a Krugerrand. It's one ounce gold, uh, and it was really the first way that people were able to collect one ounce gold in coins. So it's actually mm. a little heavier 
then an ounce, but I think it's 22 point something karat gold. Uh, but it was just, it was the first way that someone was able to just give me an ounce of gold. I want to buy that ounce of gold rather than we have some coins that are US that are 0.97 ounces of gold. So this was one full ounce of gold. If someone wanted to invest, they could buy this. So this is a South African Krugerrand. I uh, got this probably a year ago. Uh, it was one of my first gold pieces. So love that. It's probably one of my few international pieces that I have. Um, and then... What's, what's this? So this, yeah. This is... Uh, my dad actually recently just gave this to me. Um, we've, got a, we've got some traditions. I mean, me and my dad, we're both collectors. He's not a coin collector, but he's, he collects other stuff. Okay. Um, so to go with that, every home game... He gets something for me. He's always surprised. I never know what it is. Uh, this was a couple weeks ago. It's just a fi it's a five ounce poured bar of silver. Uh, so this goes with not necessarily a coin, but into my gold and silver, my precious metals collection uh, that I have. So love that. I've gotten this. Uh, I've gotten Halloween silver coins. I've gotten military commemorative coins. So every home game, he uh, brings me a coin, and then actually on the road, I get some type of Rubik's cube. It's another story. <laughs> but, uh, so That's yeah, next no, week. This, is, uh, this was a recent one that my dad just gave me, and I think it was last, he came down last Thursday and gave it to me for this game. So really like this one. It's Very cool. Day. Now, is part of the joy of collecting it it's the stories behind it, kind of the, the stories that go with it. Yeah, that's, and that's what you look for. I mean, you go in and you'll, so a, a great yeah. story with this one. This is Chicago World Fair. Not a very expensive coin, nice. but it's part of the commemorative series. So from 1892, the first one, mm -hmm. this one, up and through late 19th century, or late 1900s, uh, people started to develop half dollars, cup one quarter, one dollar, but mostly half dollars. They would sell them for a premium. So this one was sold for a dollar. Uh, to raise money for the Chicago World's Fair back in 1892, 1893. Yep. Um, so that's another one of my biggest collections. It's the classic commemorative collection. Uh, so there's an Oregon Trail. There's, I think there's 50 plus coins. Hmm. Uh, but this one's the one that started it all. It's my first collection I really got into. Morgan's were a little later, and that took over. But this is probably one of my favorite, uh, just the classic commemoratives, because there's great stories. There's uh, another one I brought with is the uh, sesquicentennial. It's a 150-year anniversary for the uh, U.S. Uh, there's one commemorating uh, Abraham Lincoln. Just a bunch of coins and the reasons why they were made, what they raised money for. Right. Just a lot of really cool stuff with them. Very cool. All right. What else? We got a we'll couple. Go with, other, uh, one other thing here. Two other things here. What are we working? So on? this one, this one, just a, a classic coin I brought with. This one kind of blends in between. Uh, it's a 1987, uh, just a one ounce silver coin. It's kind of blends between the coin and the bullion market. So it's a coin, so it attracts coin, coin collectors as well. Um, but someone that was just interested in buying silver, this is a great way to buy silver. Uh, people do it frequently. Had to bring it as a classic American coin. We've had it for now since 1986. Had the same coin every year. So really a classic coin. Uh, love that one. And then the last one I brought, it is my second oldest coin, 1799. Uh, it's my oldest dollar that I have. It's a $17.99 uh, flowing hair dollar. Absolutely love it. I got this only a couple months ago. But my oldest, second oldest coin I have, my oldest dollar that I have. Uh, and not a, not a huge story going behind it, but just the reason that I love it so much is because you can still see the detail on the coin. It's, well, I mean, for it to be made 200 and almost 20 years ago and yeah. To think where our country was in 1799, I mean, George Washington had just been president. Uh, president. I mean, the revolution had barely just ended. So to think where our country was and this coin's from around that era and I can have it, I, I love it. I kind of nerd out over it. That's where the history <laughs> blends into it. Uh, but I love it. I've been collecting for, for 10 years now. Um, absolutely love everything about it. I've met some incredible people, uh, built great relationships. So I love it. Okay, so two final questions here. Uh, one, where have you not been able to go shopping for a coin that you want to go? I mean, are there specific large conventions? Yes. Is it a certain, you know, is it a certain store in Boston? I mean, what's where's a where's a location that you want to go and just geek out at? Uh, Tampa, Florida. There's a convention every year. I was not expecting Tampa, Florida. No, this there's a, so no. Champagne has great coin market. Yeah. Well, don't want to rip. <laughs> Absolutely, there's no, tremendous, he's... tremendous stuff, but. There's a convention every year down in Tampa, Florida. Um, my my coin collector Mark over at our coin dealer Mark over at uh, Specialty Stamp of Coin goes all the time. It's incredible. You will see coins that you may see once in your lifetime. Uh, 
millions of dollars of coins and cash are going in and out of that place for the couple days that it's running. Um, armed guards everywhere. Uh, that's where I mean it's. Uh, so you want I, you want to go? That's where I want to go. Scene. Yeah, that's it's where I want to go. Even if I can't buy the super expensive coins <laughs> there, I want to just go be able to see them, uh, be around some of the biggest coin collectors in the in the country, and just that would be that's kind of my element. Yeah. Just get to nerd out, talk about coins, learn about coins. Uh, that would be an absolute blast to go to. Okay, so Tampa, Florida, we got mm -hmm. that now. The final question, what's, what's your holy grail? I mean, what's, what, is there a specific coin? Is there a specific run that you want to get a piece of? I mean, what's, what's out there? What's uh, the so the coin that I want is the 1895 plane. It, okay. So 1895, very low mintage. There was an O, there was an S, and there was a plane. So New Orleans, San Francisco, and then uh, Philadelphia. Okay. The, the New Orleans and San Francisco, they minted a decent amount, so you can find those coins. But the Philadelphia, the plane, they only minted 880 of them, hmm. and they're minted as proofs. Uh, so I believe from the collectors I've talked to, I think three or four of them have gone through their shops, and a very, very average condition coin uh, is 30,000, 40,000. Hmm. Um, if you find a nice one, you're talking hundreds of thousands. So that's, that would be, so that's not considered part of the Morgan collection because there's so very few of them. Right. But if I were to get that, that would be, that would be like the, the coin of my Morgan collection. I could complete it. Um, so that's yeah. If, if if I'm ever there in life and there's that coin available, uh, and I have the funds, that coin will be purchased uh, and stored away for, for a long time. So. <laughs> well, no. Hey, th this is great. You know. Thanks for stopping by, talking a little bit uh, about one of your interests, one of your passions off the field. We see you out there on Saturdays mm -hmm. uh, having a great season. And, you know, again, I think it's always great to show people uh, the interest that you guys have outside the field. So thanks for Thank taking you. time, man. Appreciate you having me.